Okay. Um, I used to hear this uh, verse, not even the verse. I used to hear this phrase right here. For whatsoever is not a faith in sin. And it was like folk didn't even know the rest of it. But I used to hear this all the time. All the time. For whatsoever. And it, let me tell you what it meant. It meant whatever was not enumerated or listed in the scriptures was wrong. Well, it's a little bit deeper than what he's actually talking about. If we don't get to the point where we start studying the context and recognize uh, that uh, the Bible was not originally written in chapters and verses. Right. That's if right. We, if we don't get out of that, you're going to continue to have problems. Because right. let me tell you, verses, chapters, that stuff don't come along until hundreds and hundreds of years yeah. after the text was already laid down. Yeah. When we when we keep on quoting 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 and evil communication, corrupt, good morals, and don't even know what he's talking about, he was actually talking about folk that were saying there was no resurrection. Uh -huh. Now don't get me wrong, birds of a flood, I believe, flock together and all that. But he was quoting that in a religious context. Mm -hmm. Last time I checked, when Jesus was sitting around some sinners, it said that Jesus reclined at the table. That's right. So is it wrong to be amongst sinners if you're gonna be a light? And if we a whole bunch of candles in here and our light is shining, we got light. It's dark out there. That's putting it under a bushel. I ain't got to set him on fire. He on fire. I don't really have to set you on fire. But it is my job if I got some more light, if I got if I got some knowledge to help, that's what I'm here for. All right. Um, now let's talk touching things offered to idols. Y'all, let me let me also say, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Catch me about six years ago. I ain't touching no Easter. I, I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't doing my holidays because I'm a historian. Six years ago. But this, this right here, and true understanding this right here, is one day the light bulb went off. And now it's such a thing it's offered to idols. We know um, that we all have knowledge, knowledge but the but charity edify it. And if a man think that he know uh, knoweth anything, he knoweth not yet nothing as he ought know. But if any man love God and seem to be known in him the same as no, as concerning therefore those uh, the eating of those things that are offered to and sacrifice unto idols. We know, this is what did it for me. We know that an idol is nothing. I had to stop right there in my tracks and say, wait a minute. You know historically what people did, but that was a false god. Uh -huh. Ain't no such thing as Ishtar, goddess of fertility. Yeah. The god of fertility is Jehovah. Yes. He gives life. Yeah. So when I say Easter, I ain't thinking about no, no Ishtar. I'm thinking about God. Therefore, I can say, this is, this is my fertility. I'm giving praise to God. Paul says, the word, nothing in the world, there is none other God but who? Boom. God. Give glory to God. For though there be that are called gods, mm -hmm. whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but unto us, there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things in him. But you know what? Um, back to this guy, you know, you got to be mindful of the knowledge. You got to be mindful of the people. Watch verse 7. How be it? There is not in every man that knowledge, but some with conscience. Mm -hmm. Their mind of the idol unto this hour eating is an, as as a thing. As a thing. As a, that's important. Yeah. As a thing offered. That's what they're yeah. thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. See, when I say Easter, I'm not, I don't even associate it with Ishtar. Somebody else might. I associate it with Jehovah God. Um, and then it says, their conscience being, get this word in your spirit. Let me just go ahead and tell you because we might not have time. You're going to have to be honest. Those that had the issues with things that we could exercise in liberty aren't the strong ones. They're the weak ones. That's good. Go back and read it. That's good. He's going to say it a whole bunch of The ones that have a problem with those things that are in liberty to be exercised are not the strong ones. They're the weak ones in the scripture. And strong don't look like old with gray hair. 
Strong is defined by understanding God and knowledge. Because let me tell you, spirit don't grow like your flesh. Amen. How many folk have you outgrown that's been in the church longer than you? Mm -hmm. And that's part of the resentment. We're looking on the outward show of man, and God don't look at that. Yeah. Yes, sir. I know plenty of folk my age that are far beyond those who have been in the church longer than they've been alive. Why? Because the application of scriptural knowledge is what you grow. The, if you don't believe me, the Hebrew writer is in my presentation. The Hebrew writer says, you have need that one to what? Teach, Teach you. Again. Okay, so, that, so it was happening even back yeah. then. Folk that should have known better than what they knew did not know, had need that one come and teach them again. And oftentimes, who came to teach? First Timothy chapter 4, yeah. verse number 12. Young man had to come teach. The old, you know, not 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 trying to divide the room. I'm just keeping it real. Uh, you know, I give illustrations for of the young and the old. You know, but um, let's let's even that out. Let me just say it like that. Let's be an equal opportunity employer of our stuff because it ain't just young folk messing up. That's right. Some of us are having to deal with the messed up mess that some of our older ones have <laughs> left <laughs> us <laughs> with. So now have we come and we decided to be biblically honest rather than tradition. And it's not a sign of disrespect. I'd rather respect God than respect you. Because if I respect God, then I automatically respect you. I heard some, somebody. Yes, sir. Well, I was just simply saying in regard to uh, uh, those who preferred and uh, allowed things or did things that was really not really uh, of the scriptures mm -hmm. uh, was primarily motivated by zeal. Mm -hmm. But zeal without knowledge has always been dangerous. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Personal God. That's true. Paul had zeal. the zeal. Yeah, yeah. Paul yeah. had zeal. Yeah. Look at what he say about his own brother right. over there in Romans Rome. chapter 10. They had a zeal of God. Because we don't get to that. I hope we get to that. Um, if we don't, uh, do your word study on stumbling block and the word offense. Write those words down, stumbling block. Yeah. Because guess what? If it has to do with being having a dislike. See, dislike ain't in that to ain't in the text. Stumbling block and offense in the text. Yeah. And they're in there as original coordinate Greek words right. in the text. Yeah. And what that means is uh, it's bigger than a dislike. These folk actually believe that something, when you're dealing with an offense, it was something that impeded their growth yeah. in Christ. It was sinful within their conscience. Not a dislike. I can dislike a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> But it ain't about tailoring. It's about gaining the ones that are out there and making sure I do it within the parameters mm -hmm. of the scripture. Yes, so, so a dislike, uh, if a stumbling block is a dislike, then pray tell me what was Jesus and Romans. Because it said he became a stumbling block mm -hmm. to the Jews. Why? Because they couldn't receive him. And yeah. you know what that did? Their relationship with God could what? Go no further. It stopped right there for them when he came. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, uh, what's happening today, uh, uh, usually uh, among those who understand this teaching about liberty, is the same problem Jesus was dealing with. Why didn't they like Jesus? It wasn't just because he was popular. It was because Jesus yeah. kicked tradition out the door. Yes. Matthew 15. Jesus what you doing uh, transgressing the traditions of the fathers? I yeah. love Jesus' response. He said, why do you transgress the law of God uh, yes, sir. by your tradition? Your tradition. <laughs> Anytime your tradition is more important than being biblically honest, you are in sin. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. That's, that's the point. Uh, okay. Um, here we go. Stumbling block. Yes, sir. To them that are weak. You, it, it, it'd be difficult to make me stumble uh, to a degree because I'm not weak in the faith. Yeah. But yes. when you start noticing what's making you stumble, then you got to also examine yourself to see where you are in the faith because you may need to go back and do some more study. 
-hmm. here's the thing I, I need to get to because the, the part about this is that being weak, look at all these weeks here. When the, whenever the scripture repeats stuff like that, it's important uh, that our weak, for many, seeing what thou which has knowledge, sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him that which is who? Weak, be emboldened. Emboldened means built up. This is a person that's in the process of building their spiritual house. Sometimes a new convert, sometimes one that just sees somebody who they believe knows more that they can follow. So they're going to build their knowledge of God based on what they see you do. But then they also having this spiritual conflict with something they believe to be sin. That's a person that needs to be taught. God does never, he never meant for the weak one to stay weak. So even if you find yourself in the context where you say, well, we need to back up off of that because the weak is linked right now. We've got folk that don't understand that it's a liberty. Even if you will acknowledge sometimes, and sometimes you have to do that too. It's not that it's, you're backing up to, to not impose and to not disregard a person's weakness. So you back up off of a liberty so that you can help them. But when you know they are weak, you now have an obligation to do what? Leaders, preachers, you have an obligation to teach, to strengthen. That's why you're here. If you're not, if you're not here to strengthen, if you're not here to teach, if you're not here to, to help them, uh, and you're in a preacher position, you're in an elder position, if you're in these positions but it's not your goal and intent to strengthen the weak, get out of it. Sit down. Because that's, that's not what you were called for. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, 11 and the following. Yeah. I have a folk in my congregation who's whose family members are members of another congregation or other denomination, I say. And they don't believe in eating pork. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they, when they get together, they say, man, I eat all the pork I wanted for them. I said, well, now nah, see, you don't know nothing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, don't, you don't do that. Say, yeah, you know, know if, if, yeah. if I get with my family member and they yeah. got, if I'm yeah. trying to gain, exactly. right, exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Per, I don't go there. No, no. I went to a uh, predominantly white congregation. Um, this past Sunday, and man, pre preacher did an awesome job. I heard, and, and, and I, I wanted to shout so many times, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I didn't bother with it. <laughs> I heard one guy up front say an amen, and it was almost like if he could have pulled it back before it came out, he would have. <laughs> but but, but I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't go there. But man, it was, a, it was a powerful word. It was a powerful word that preacher gave. Emboldened, uh, although they're uh, thy knowledge shall the weak, brother. Parent, they're following you. You supposed to know, preacher. You supposed to know, elder, big such such. You've been in church a long time. You supposed to know I'm following you. But you gotta teach them. When ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. There are times, but it depends on the context. So you gotta be careful with blanketing. That picture we saw earlier with the Christmas tree and all that. That's fine with them folk there. They ain't got no problem with that. Ain't nobody conscious being violated, far as I know, up in there. They good. So we cannot say over here where we are that they are in sin over there. How so? Well, here's the thing. What's happening in our day and time is a little bit different than the ancient times. First of all, the world is getting smaller, not physically, but uh, socially. Uh -huh. It's very small. And what's going to keep us honest is social media. You ain't going to be able to say something at a congregation over here than say it over something different over there. You know why? Because you're on YouTube, partner. Mm -hmm. And if you said it, it better be true. <laughs> and, and you better hold to it. And you better be honest. And so all that talking that you do here, here, there, at the lectureship and condemning stuff down here, and then you go over there and, and where they do everything that you just condemn. <laughs> what does that make you? Hypocrite. Hmm? What does that make you? <laughs> I'm talking about being scripturally, I'm going to say real, yeah. rather than traditionally loyal. Yeah. Um, Wound that we conscious sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat made my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh. They like to cite this verse, uh, verse number 13. This is true in the context. Paul said it. If meat make my brother to, to make my brother to offend. But though you got an obligation to teach them. Because there is a class of folk dealt with by Paul in, I believe it's 1 Timothy chapter 4, that know better, but choose not to do better because their conscience is seared. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You try to teach, but they refuse to learn. That's right. Guess what the Bible says about that person? They here physically, but they done left a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have already left the faith. When you get to the point where, where you know it, some of us think because, hey, I done got baptized and I know the five steps, I can preach. Mm -hmm. Sit down. You can't teach nobody, you can't preach, and you ain't ready to be no leader. There's so much more, we need, and we all are learning. None of us know it all. Um, okay, uh, where we at? Ah, uh, this is some definition. Yeah, this is some, this is some definition. Um, go ahead and do your own work study. I had it here for you. Stumbling block. Uh, it's like a trap. It's 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 got to do with sin. Uh, check out uh, Romans nine thirty three. Jesus. That's talking about Jesus. He became a rock of offense. This word offense don't mean offended. Mean like it do today. This word offense means you are putting something in the way of me having a relationship with Christ. That's different than I don't like I don't like that. I don't like the flash. I don't like I don't like you know I, I had somebody come to a gospel meeting um, and I got it as an example, fictitious person, anonymous person. Uh, I was having somebody come to a gospel meeting for me. They would not come because they said that person's too flashy for them. <laughs> Just it was just one person, but I was I was shocked. Now, th and this is a person that's been in the church probably all day life. I mean, since they they were they were about seventy something or whatever, and they've been in the church at least it was at least fifty years, probably long. They would not come. Said that person too flashy. For them. Ah, <laughs> and we already talked about priests and everything. Okay, but you can read this in your own time. Uh, who pursue the law, the way of righteousness, have not uh, attained their goal. This is talking about Christ. Uh, and then down here, they are zealous of God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Okay, we talked about that earlier. Uh, here's the definition for a fin, where, I, where we get our word uh, scandal uh, from. Okay. Uh, Taylor, I have a question. Yes, sir. I, I really like it from your perspective. You, you've got a lot of experience on this. The thing is, the struggle is when you try to be honest. There are people. My fear is that there are people who still not there yet, right? Mm -hmm. How do I help move them along so that I can win some of these people, but I don't want to lose them in the process? In the process. Because yeah, okay. I think we all struggle with that. A lot of us know better about a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? Right. The question is, how do? What do we do? How do you do it? You could kind of speak on that. Okay, um, here's one of the things I think was effective uh, where, I, where I served that was uh, important to do. Um, I, did, I, I, I did a newcomer class, but I did it in the part, I guess people just didn't want to move. A lot of folk that been in church a long time were in my newcomer class. See? And I was able to do a base knowledge and, and teach them. And in, and, and in going back over some basic things, the ones that had been in the church a while were honest enough to say, didn't we didn't learn that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know it. You know, okay, I'm, I'm going. And, I, and the other thing, we have to be very, we have to have skills in teaching. If you cannot articulate your argument, prove your argument, I wouldn't go there because you, you might, you know, hurt somebody. It's like trying to do <coughs> surgery. You know, you don't want me trying to work on you. Exactly. you know, no, I can't right. do it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But if you know what you're doing, then you can do it. The other thing is knowing your flock and being able to separate those classes and bring folk up. Now, the problem comes in when we get into corporate liberty. See, when you get in worship, you got everybody in there. And that's where we have to exercise, work on our weakest link. Now, what, am I, what have I said? If you can separate the classes and know who you got, you take the class that you know as a teacher, as a leader, these are the weaker ones. Strengthen them. Bring them up. Because when they get to the point, that, make them, that allows you to be able to go further. Okay. See, you might have the older ones, they know, they understand, oh, ain't no issue with the base mic, but you got the weaker ones that got a problem. But if you teach and, and break that down to them, and they understand the scriptures on that, you understand it well, and you bring them up, so as things change or, or introduce then they able to accept it there's no violation of conscience like me i had an issue with holidays but diligent study revealed to me i shouldn't have that problem 
So if I had a problem, it was a dislike rather than a sinful issue. And you still may know better. You may not like some stuff. I, I had an older Christian. They, they, knew the, they knew the difference now. They said, well, yeah, I don't like that. But no, I can't say that it's sin. I can't say that. They were honest. But I don't like it. I say, well, as long as you know the difference. That's what we're trying to do. Not trying to please and, and, and tend to your likes. Because what you like may not be what's beneficial to gain. Paul said, I became all things mm -hmm. to all men. So my, what I like may not be beneficial to gain. And, it, and we have to ask ourselves, it, what is it about? Is it about you? Hmm. Or is it about letting that light shine so that those who are in the dark can see it hmm. and gravitate toward it? Because if it's about what you like, then maybe we'll attract people that's like you. But maybe you represent a small population of folk anyway. Yeah. That's what Brother Leonard was talking about when he talked about talking the language. Depending on who I'm talking, I, 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 I haven't gone as far as I probably could go in here uh, with some of the research that I've done, and it's really just due to time. But there are certain words I use among you that I would not use uh, in a certain population. When I, when I talk to my people up in Jacksonville, I, I use a whole lot of slang terms. That's because I know who's out there. And then at the same time, I'll demonstrate, you know, some knowledge and I'll, I'll use a bigger word, but then I come back and explain it so everybody can get what you follow what I'm saying. You got to become what you can become. Um, I know that I'm out. I know I'm out. But um, I, I had so much more. What I'm going to try to do is speed it up so we can get further in the next section. Yeah. Uh, if y'all did you have any quick questions? Well, let, let me run this at you. Uh, I know you, you had the King James up there, mm -hmm. and then you used the word Easter. Yes. In the original language, the word Easter is not even found in the Bible, period. period. And that's what I, I, I've gotten away from the King James long after when I finished my degree, biblical language degree in, in Lubbock Christian University back in the 80s. And uh, it was never there, and even people focus on the King James because it says the authorized version. King James authorized it right, to, be, to, to come to play, but if they ever look at his life, yeah. oh yeah, it's raggedy as a man. I mean, bad. Yeah. I mean, bad. yes. And even having women killed, and that's yeah. a whole lot of crazy stuff. But anyway, uh, and to get back to it, Easter is not found there, and the word Passover mm -hmm. is the right word. Is the right word. Yes, and and I, I teach that, and I, I'm going to continue to teach that. I'm trying to get people to come away from the King James version. Period. Because all it is is just an authorized version by yeah. King James who is dead. Yeah. And it's just a translation. Right. And many of the things that, are, that should have been brought over using the, 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 the original language, King James translators didn't do that because they were, they were, uh, they, they were prejudiced against some of the things that was there. Yeah. And especially because of his lifestyle. Yes, sir. But anyway, I thought I'd drop that. Mm -hmm. Sir, just a question. In your opinion, uh, Taylor, uh, is traditionalism okay. more of an issue with those who have been around a long time, or is traditionalism on both sides of the generation span? Okay, he asked for me for my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go a little further. I believe if we take a poll, it would be a statistical fact that the problem with tradition is rooted in those that have been around for a long time. Because your stronger conditions, tradition, the word is tied to history. Right. The word is tied to having a, a long-standing period of practice. Mm -hmm. So the longer that a thing has been in practice, the stronger it is rooted mm -hmm. and it becomes a tradition. Those that have not had yet to change or make some things happen usually don't have an issue with what's new and what's coming in because they have not been rooted in the traditions of years ago. So usually... Yes, it's a problem with those who have been around. Every now and then you find someone that understands this teaching and don't have a problem, even though they've been around for the traditions. If you know the difference between tradition and law, you won't have a problem. Yeah, and, and, many, and many folks uh, grew up under that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. traditionalism. Yeah. That was the lifestyle they had no, no way to get out of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they grew up under yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, some of the problem, bro, we tell folk, when we bring them out of 
We tell folk when we bring them out of uh, uh, denominations and stuff, and, and we give them a Bible study, and we say, hey, you know, we got this, this one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and that's right. And they're supposed to drop all of their tradition, then. Okay? And I'm not saying they shouldn't, but watch this. Come into church. Do some teaching like this. It be right. And you got us that won't drop our tradition. Because we say, nah, uh uh. Ain't supposed to wear no robe like that in the pool pit. That's what we say. And you, and what you holding on to is no more than a tradition than what these folk came out of in the Baptist Methodist or wherever they came from. It's no more than a than a tradition. But we had better start being scripturally honest rather than being traditionally loyal and personal. I'm loyal to nobody. I'm loyal to God. I respect you because you're my brother in Christ. I give God proper respect. But there is not a preacher in the church of Christ that has power over Taylor. Brother Taylor, I want to hit this base back thing one time. Now I I um, I toured with that. I toured with that for a long time uh, before we started. Yeah. And I had a I had a white sister come from Ohio, and every time the bass mic was introduced, my song was on it. Uh, she would go out in the foyer and stand out there. She said it, it affected her her worship service. Make a long story short, she finally left and went somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So now at this time, every week now, and no, it, it was, <laughs> it, my, my thoughts were, you know, you have people coming in, and my mindset was, you know, we don't want to tra change the culture mm -hmm. of the church. Right. But here again, she finally left and went somewhere. But since that time, I just sort of <coughs> ceased the base back. I wanted some input in that area. Okay. Um. It would, it would take me long, but let me try to do this as quick as possible. Uh, where you are and what works in your area would be better practice because the goal is to gain. If the goal is to gain and you find that utilizing the base mic will allow you to gain more for the church than it will to put out, then who is it about? It's about them and it's about gaining. But if having the base mic um, will, will cause you more of an issue and you can't gain, then that's not the better practice. Because it's not about whether or not to have it with a sound. It's about can I gain for Christ? Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you what I see and what I've observed in Christ. Like what we talk about that fire, we talk about showing and acting like look, it's pretty hard to invite culturally our folk into anything that look <laughs> dead. And, and 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 Sunday is probably the most segregated day of of, of, of the week, of, of the year, whatever. So if if we are attracting people in general, especially folk that look like us, um, I'm willing to say, I, I'm, more, I'm leaning more toward, you had better look like you got some fire. <laughs> yeah. If you, you try to gain. Yeah. yeah, but if you look dead, ain't gonna be there. Why, why don't you, look, I went to that church on Sunday, and don't get me wrong, biblical service, the preacher was awesome. Me personally, ain't no sin, just me personally. I want to be somewhere where I can stand up and say, preach, yeah, preach. Ahead, if I feel like, you know, throwing a handkerchief, I feel yeah. like I can do it. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. That, that's personal now. Yeah. And just like, but everything they did was fine. Yeah. That just ain't for Taylor. I'm going to go over here because cause, cause I'm going to give a shout. Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we, I, got, I have more. I even had some scenarios. On that particular topic, but we gotta cut off. Yeah. If you wanna know what I think, bro, we'll talk. I appreciate y'all. Cause you, you ain't got no power unless the power be gifted. That's right. Last time I checked, if Jesus is the power and I'm with him, then who can be? Yeah. Come on. Just think about those things. Those are the things we say. What kind of preacher wear that stuff? Yeah. Who, who wear that stuff? I had another, I had another picture here, yeah, I, know I, I took it out because I say, well, somebody might know, even though I blotted out his face, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we know, yeah, we, we know. know, but I'm saying though, I'm looking like the world, right? Yeah. I'm just saying, that's what some of us say, I don't have a problem with it, I'm, I'm just your teacher, your facilitator, whatever you want to call me, but he's always used that, looking like the world, that. putting that robe on for, and now it's kind of slick because, 
This right here go down to the feet. Mm. It just kind of shorten it. It looked like a jacket. It's the same thing. Same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> same thing. Who wear that? Is, is it wrong to wear that? No. Um, but, but but he looking like the fellowship New Mount Zion preacher. Yeah. He look, <laughs> he because he looked like him. It's that's sin. But the Lord that church. Like, something that, that mm -hmm. Brother Butler said yesterday <laughs> was that the preacher is a type of a priest, as Paul refers back to the priest. Ooh, man. What did the priest wear? Mm. Come on, don't do not give me that. Leaned out. Leaned out. What did the priest wear? Twelve stones on their chest. What did, and God ordained for them to wear that. Yeah. Right. So we've got to be careful before we start labeling what we wear mm -hmm. as who we are. Who we are and what we wear are two different things. Amen. But then if you, know, you look if you look at it, if you look at we all are or priest. Or priest. Yeah. And there's no, but see, when you're dealing with folks who are caught up in this tradition, yeah. tradition. they fail to see the whole truth. Yeah. And, and I'm give you an example, not, not taken away from the, from the teacher, is that we had a brother come in and do a, a meeting for us. He had on a turtleneck, mm -hmm. had a jacket. Mm -hmm. I made mention of it and, uh, uh, I said, well, I think I, and I, I was pulled to the side. Well, no, 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 that's not scripture. I said, find it in the Bible. <laughs> find it in the Bible. You got to have, you got to have, listen, you got to have on a tie. I, I know. I said, you, you have to wear a tie. I said, no, that's, no, you don't, you, you can't find that. Because wheelchair brothers, they can't work around the table unless they got a shirt and a tie. Well, and we'll get to expediency that's coming up. Yeah. That back last Sunday, but we on the subject. I wore a bandy collar. Yeah. You know, when I did my first internship, we go to Northeastern, the Northeastern part of the country. I did an internship in Boston. I'm from, I'm from Florida. Mm -hmm. did an internship in Boston. I'm, supposed, I'm the intern, so I'm supposed to preach the first sermon I got there. And I put on this, man, my suit, man, my suit was on. I had this silver <laughs> satin shirt, pinstripe. I was ready. Uh, got up there, got, got, got in the building. They say, where's your tie? But see, the shirt, is a, it's a collarless shirt. I say, no, you don't, you don't, you're not supposed to wear a tie with these. these. No, you, you gotta, you're going to have to preach next Sunday. Oh. <laughs> see what y'all didn't take, but see, it was a, it's a kind mm -hmm. of a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. They just assume yes. that I knew they, if they had said that, I would have went in there with, because I, I had some shirts like that where I could have. I just that to me that was my favorite. That was my best suit. This is gonna be my first time in front of these folk. I wanted. I felt like I'm gonna wear this one. You mm -hmm. follow what I'm saying? Best look for, yeah. And then we say that too. Oh man. We got we got to put forth your best yeah. Sunday as it relate with dress. Well, then wear the same suit every Sunday. All right. Which one better? Yeah. yeah. If that's your best one, then you should be wearing it next week unless you go buy one better than that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one. Well, I think in, in that regard, what you do is you try to think about where you're going. Okay. So you be all things all men. Well, see, we well, see, and, and, and that be yeah. all things all men is where is where I'm going. But at the time where I'm from Florida, yeah. I'm 20 years old. No, I was 19 at the time. I ain't never been to the northeastern part at that time of night. Some of them have been down south. And then, let's let's go a little further. The wisdom of just simply being older than me. You, you, why you didn't tell me that? But I'm supposed to know that. You follow what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. All right. Here goes some more. <laughs> Look at these. These right here are actually more expensive than this one because I guess the baggage is the more material. Uh -huh. uh, I like this one right here. I'm, I'm gonna have to um, invest in that. It's a two, man. Yeah. <laughs> what about <laughs> these places, <laughs> memberships? For if any man see thou was hast knowledge, sit at meat in the idle simple, shall not the conscience of him. Look at that word. Oh boy, let's keep it real. The conscience of him that is weak be emboldened to eat some of those things which are offered to idols. You know what? I'm, I'm pretty sure even in the body of Christ, we have some influential people. We do some things not because we know what the Bible says. We do some things because of our association and who is doing them. 
you know what? I believe almost 50% of the church would follow an influential preacher, even if he was totally false, mm -hmm. just because it was him. Mm -hmm. There would be so much gravity behind it. Must must be okay. Mm -hmm. Such and such said it must be okay. Mm -hmm. Or it must be wrong. Because such and such said it must be wrong. Y'all better, we gotta study, y'all. We gotta study it. God is the truth. Concerts, organizations, political office, clubs. Oh, some of us, we got this thing now. Let's, let's keep it real. Let's name some. One in particular, some folks say, can't be no Mason. Mm. <laughs> oh, you can't. Then you got another member of the church Christ said, you can't be a Mason. Let me give you my own experience. Met a guy at Southwestern. Asked him how to become a member of the church. He was a ministerial student. He told me if it had not been for Masonry, he wouldn't be a member of the church. You know how this guy found the church? He went to, from church to church, and he didn't start studying the Bible till he became a Mason. Mm -hmm. When he became a Mason, started studying the Bible, and he uh, found out that there wasn't but one church, so he started looking for churches that fit the biblical description. Mm -hmm. He said, the only one I could find was the Church of Christ. I said, well, what's this thing in my mind? He said, there's good Masons, there's bad Masons. He said, ain't you got good Christians and bad Christians? <laughs> I let that go. But then you got some that give reasons like this. Oh, well, you can't keep no secrets. Huh? Well, they got secrets, and you can't keep secrets. Um, that's a biblical ignorance. That's really what that is. Because I don't know too many people ain't got no secrets. Mm -hmm. You got some secrets? Got some stuff you don't want nobody to know? <laughs> All right. And if you don't, if you say that, that then, then tell me all your business right now. Right now, pour it out. Tell me everything about you. You ain't going to do it, then, then, then stay where you at. Diet, play, play, playing cards. Oh, man, some people. Spades is a sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't play spades. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Look, man. You're going to marble. Look, man. I think we're going to snap and throw it up. Ministry rolls. Dancing. I first got to where I was going, and some folks were introducing themselves. They said, oh, yeah, we've been in the church such and such time, and, and we've been doing this and that, and when we don't do this, and we don't do that. And they were defining themselves about by what they don't do, and they said, yep, and we don't even dance. Hmm. Me and my wife looked at each other like, okay, we was just getting us, and we didn't say much. I'm like, you know, you're not coming to our, uh, our anniversary party because we're going we to cut some rug. That ain't funny to some of y'all. I know what I know what I know where I'm at now. But the thing is this: look, if you don't dance, don't dance. Just don't come to something I'm having, because that's what it's gonna be. And I'm at liberty to do that. Y'all follow me? This? All right. Let's get let's get. Let's get, let's get <laughs> Happy Easter. You say all this right here, then you say, but don't dance though. Yeah, you trunk or treat at some congregations. Maybe yeah. say, uh, uh, yeah, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Val Val what is Saint Valentine's, Valentine's? What is that? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody got some festivities going on, program going on uh, Sunday? Valentine's Day. Do no, some research yeah. on who Saint Valentine is. <laughs> All right, Romans 14. <laughs> These are some different versions. We even got problems with that. We don't understand why these two over here even <laughs> exist. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. KJV. Yeah. We we act like it was in, re inspired on 1611. <laughs> like God breathed it again. Yeah. And you better, better wake up, <laughs> smell the papyrus. Uh, him that is. Weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubt for this. You know what? It's I'm not mutation. even going to go there. You know what that would say. <laughs> Let's keep it real. Welcome with open arms, fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. And don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't, you don't agree with. Even when it seems that they are strong on opinions. Weak. In... The faith department, remember, they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. They go both ways, to the most liberal, to the most conservative. Dr. Evans said something one time that was profound. You can be no more conservative or liberal than what? Than the Bible allows. That's right. You can be as conservative as you want to. Just don't get outside the Bible. 
You can be as liberal as you want to. Just don't get outside the Bible. But when you start being conservative to the point that you bind what God has not bound, when you start being liberal to the point where you lose what God has not loose, yeah. that's when you out of bounds. Taylor, I make a comment. Yes, sir. Um, I think what you have here is the reason why we have a lot of problems in the church. I'm not a big fan of the message because it's mm -hmm. a paraphrase, mm -hmm. right? That's it right. does help a lot of people, particularly younger people, get the essence of it. The deeper study it is somewhat lacking. Right. But the problem with the King James is mm -hmm. because of when it was translated, there's a lot of words in there that we don't use now. Mm -hmm. And they don't mean the same thing then as they do Absolutely. now. And we read them today like they do. That. And I had a I had a Bible study when isn't that we went over a translation how it was done and, and make a point very quickly. It was like, well, I just King James. And I said, well, you know, I said this to them, and then they finally got, I said, well, then only people who speak English are going to hell. Because <laughs> if, if you don't speak English, you're going to hell, because you can't read the King James. Because King James is only English. And they looked at me, and they said, I said, no, there's no Spanish King James. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's no German King James. <laughs> and, 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 and then finally the light went on, that this is a translation from Greek and Hebrew text. To English at this time, and we need to be true to the Amen. Amen. Well, I went to the uh, national lectureship last year, and brother uh, that's there, uh, brother Jeff Carruthers, gave um, a class on John. Mm -hmm. and he got into the, the different manuscripts and papyrus, and I'm, I'm not going to go into it. But brother uh, Carruthers said some stuff, and me and brother Corey Glover were there, and we told him we said within the first 15 minutes, some of the stuff he said. We knew people that would have walked out of that class mm -hmm. because of what they heard about the original manuscripts and what might be there and mm -hmm. what might, might not, not be, be there. there. But but that's another thing. And by the way, some folk I had 